proximity. I'm a targeted individual human being who's been given more gallons, covertly drugged with LSD, tortured with remote neural monitoring, microwave, nanotechnology, genetic manipulation, toxins, gang stalking, forced relocation, brain damage. I've been murdered. I'm just not quite dead yet. As you can see here, the difference in the coloration of the skin, these darkness and these spots all over the dry skin of my eyes and crap on the back of my neck and all this. Do you get that? And all this is, is resultant from some sort of tiny microscopic organism or nano device or genetically modified, whatever it is, something that they throw into our stuff in our room every time we get situated and it attacks us and multiplies by the billions and it's impossible to clean and takes months and spend thousands of dollars putting everything in plastic and wiping everything and using sprays and trying every over-the-counter, under-the-counter and across-the-counter remedy you can think of and all it does is attack me and Pedro. It doesn't seem to attack anyone else. And multiplies by the billions these tiny little sparkly things that they're invisible in normal light, but under the right conditions of sunlight or a uh, full spectrum sort of red tinted halogen and some lasers, you can see these things clear as day. They sparkle. And when you kill them, they turn white. But they're invisible basically in normal light. Uh, and since they only seem to attack Pedro and I, they must be genetically modified. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's killing us. It's my belief that this thing is a Lyme disease-like vector delivery thing, and every little one you get in you is another little dose of sickness, and uh, they live inside of you, and they make all these little spots, and they shit in you, and they lay eggs, and they come out, and they go back, and they come out, and they go back, that's if they're mites. If they're not, I don't know what it is, but it sucked the life out of you, uh, ages you rapidly, destroys your brain and your organs, and drives you slowly insane while causing a great deal of pain. As if that weren't enough, the gang stalkers and the ideologists and the microwave remote neural monitors are busy with their mind control bombarding Petra 24-7 with a cacophony of blame and guilt and so much so that like an abusive parent who beats you constantly, you have no idea anymore. But the truth is, you are constantly defending yourself and bursting into tears because you shouldn't have to defend your existence. And, uh, and it's really taking a toll on her. Uh, she doesn't want to admit that there's a possibility that this these attacks, these weapons, these toxins, these other things may actually have damaged her brain or body, but you can see by looking at me that it's quite clear. The progression is Alzheimer's-like loss of uh, short-term memory, working memory, and I suspect eventually some long-term memory. I have had several strokes during this one pupil bigger than the other, and uh, have uh, microvascular ischemia of the left parietal lobe, hyperdiffuse white matter, and some serious necrotic shrinking of several brain areas, also uh, a parietal lobe, and uh, I believe also a occipital lobe, and there's a, a large cleft between the two hemispheres in several locations in my brain. Now, I'm no neurologist or neuroanatomist or brain surgeon, but uh, from looking at other MRIs of quote-unquote normal brains, it appears that mine is uh, not so normal, and uh, the right uh, cerebrum 
is slightly smaller than the left cerebrum. Uh, in the back, the left occipital lobe is much smaller than the right occipital lobe. Uh, and I'm having cognitive deficits that scan pretty much the range of neuroanatomy, which tells me that this is affecting my entire system. And when seen under a microscope, basically every sample I've taken from my body contains these little tiny black somethings that I can't resolve and have no ability to test. Um, Petra and I are living in this horrible living situation in a tiny room with a guy who's now living in the living room because he's renting out the other room. And it's so small that we don't know how we're even going to pack it or get out of here. And they infested everything we own with these horrible biting things which sucked up all the money we had, made it impossible for us to move, made us look like lunatics, sound like lunatics, and feel like uh, dying. You know, and every time I go to the doctors, I can barely get any help. They don't seem to take me seriously or are interested in investigating what I'm speaking about or doing your proper tests or, you know, and so. It's obvious I'm sick, I'm dying, but I can't seem to get anyone to help me. Um, That mean, nasty woman, I don't know if you saw her, just slammed the gate and left it open. It is the daughter of Nettie, the guy that we're staying with, who has done nothing but show hatred for us since the, about the third day we lived here. Uh, she was with her mother who came as soon as the landlord told us all to get out. And his ex-wife had to come back and stay. And they both would sit there glaring at us and calling us stupid, crazy, and Blanco in Spanish, um, basically, you know, tormenting and hating us. Uh, this woman is slamming chairs and, and yelling and screaming, calling names and all this stuff. And, you know, well, on one hand, it's understandable because we're, although we try to remain calm and whatnot, our lives are chaos. These people keep coming into our lives and, and destroying us. And, uh, difficulty, the stress, the illness, the pressure, the tiny space, Petra's obsessive compulsive need to keep things organized in a space that is unorganizable in the situation that we're trying to get out of. It's, it's just it's too much for all of us. And, um, so I have so much pressure and so much hatred and so much frustration and anger from everybody and I feel it all on top of my own emotional response, which makes it even more difficult, uh, getting yelled at, do this, do that, where's this, where's that, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, trying to get Petra to, like, not act, you know, I'm just afraid they're gonna, like, take her away, and that's gonna be that, and, you know, I have nothing. I can't get disability yet, I've tried four times, maybe now that I'm dying I might be able to get it, but they may not give it to me before, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I've been running around applying for things and trying to get help from different organizations and whatnot, and there's not much available. Supposedly there's some uh, possibility of supportive housing, but I've been so involved with this craziness, trying to, you know, it's sick from this headaches, this encephalitis, where these things hatch by the millions, and I get a brain fever, and I start throwing up, and I, just look at me, man. I can't get my insurance company to approve uh, insure beverage for me. Why? Because they want me dead? I don't know. Just look at me. You know? I can't get the doctors to take me seriously. What is going on here, folks? I pray constantly. Well, not constantly, but... You know, I'm so confused, I'm so hurt, I'm so... I don't know what to do, you know? I'm trying to keep Petra calm and she just gets more angry. You know, she doesn't seem to realize that her stomping and banging makes this guy insane. He hates us more. Whatever. Anyway, that's...
minutes, 10 minutes, so God bless you all.